This call is being recorded. Yep, I am covered, but go ahead and start reading because it's going to take me a second to get back to my thing because of my foot. Okay. Hold on. Okay. I am. Ouch. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, verse, verse 3, it says, uh, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his daily wound was healed. Speaking about uh, the uh, reviving of uh, Rome, Rome, okay. uh, when one of the daily wounds he was uh, uh, was a uh, healed. Speaking about mm-hmm. Rome or the or the papacy. Okay, uh, and it says, and all the world wondered after the beast. This is uh, speaking about the uh, the fourth empire. Uh, which we're under right now, which is uh, the, the fourth empire or the fourth beast, I'm sorry, which is Roman Empire. We're under that empire uh, right now as we speak, okay? And it says, and they worshipped the dragon, which is Satan, which gave power unto the beast. So Satan gives uh, his power to the Roman Empire, empire and they worshipped the beast. <clears throat> so right now the world is worshipping the Roman Empire, okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so they're you know they're giving their worship to this fourth beast who who has their power from Satan. Okay, now it says who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war <laughs> with him? Now none of us can make war with him except Christ. All right. Uh, okay. Hold on one moment. Who is this? I'm sorry, Laura. I'll find out there. Okay, no, that was, that was nothing. Okay, now uh, verse 5, uh, it says, And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him, the beast, to continue forty and two months. Okay, now forty and two months is three and a half years. Okay. Forty and two months. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. Um, okay, so, so they're, where they're getting the seven years seven years from mm-hmm. is, uh, it sounds like, uh, well, I know the whole history of uh, the whole rapture doctrine, and I could give it to you, uh, mm-hmm. because what it, what, it, what it does, it's, it's what you would call... Uh, uh, like like the gap theory. See, there's a gap in this doctrine. And with okay, he, he, here's the thing. What what it was dur- during during uh, uh, the fourth century, uh, you had a lot of Protestants who started recognizing that the Roman Empire was the beast. So what what the Romans did or what the Pope did, they got with the Jesuits. It was a couple of men from uh, the Jesuits, and they wrote a doctrine uh, stating that the rapture would be a seven-year uh, uh, period, which is not mm-hmm. found in Scripture. So it was it was a it was more of a gap theory. So to to have people waiting on the beast, which which covers up the Roman Empire as being the beast, because we're waiting on a beast. And it couldn't be the Roman Catholic Church. It couldn't be them because we're waiting on something to happen, you see. So while we're waiting, the, the, the mark of the beast is being instituted right now, okay? And everyone is mis, misled up under the Roman Catholic doctrine. Okay, so that's what that 42 months is talking about? They're talking about, you said Rome, more or less? That's... Yeah, that's talking about the Roman Empire, okay. who okay. who is bringing is going to bring the mark of the beast up on the earth. So we are going to go through. We're not at the height of our trouble, but we're, but we're going to go through that. You know, and it's, it's going to be ter- it's going to be a terrible time once you know people are starting to get martyred. You know, having their heads decapitated, you know, mm-hmm. all of that. It's, 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 it's going to be a terrible, terrible time. Mm-hmm. Okay. But 
it's, it's not it's not going to be a rapture. It's, it's not going to be a taught, rapture. And they're being taught that this is part of the rapture. Is that is that what you're saying? Right. They're, right. Okay. They're saying that the, they're saying they're saying that during this time, mm-hmm. the church will be raptured and won't have to go through this situation, this event. So now we have to identify, well, who's the church? Because what they're saying is you have a church which is made up of Jew and Gentile. They'll be, that's, that's why they teach that there's no Jew or Gentile in the body of Christ, because they're trying to say that the body of Christ is neither Jew nor Gentile. That's the theology that they're teaching. There's neither Jew okay. nor Gentile. There's there's a church that will be raptured up, and then after they're raptured up, then uh, Christ is going to be dealing with uh, is the Israelites or the nation of Israel. Okay. That's when okay. they're going to start coming back to Christ under uh, during the the uh, time of the tribulation. So people can get saved during the tribulation period, but they're going to have to be martyrs for Christ. And it's going to be during this, at this time, that that uh, the nation of Israel is going to wake up and come to their Messiah. So that's what they teach, and that's, you know, this is that's their main doctrine. So with that understanding, we're lost in the puzzle of not, of not understanding that we're Israelites. So okay. the prophecies, the prophecies are off. You see, the whole understanding is off. So we're we're waiting for something that's not going to happen. You, you you see what I'm saying? Can I, yeah. You, you yeah. Know, we're waiting for yeah, something that's, that's not going to happen. Shows that, but see, that only shows that 42 months. So what about that? You know, talking about what about that three and a half that they were talking about? Right. So that three years period. Not, that's, they made that up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. There is no, there is no, um, no uh, set, seven year, year seven year period. Period. Mm-hmm. What they're what they're teaching what is they're, that they're three, and three and a half years. Three and a half years. I have an echo. I have an echo. I don't know why. No. No. Echo. Here. I have it too on my end. Yeah, I have it too on my end. Yeah. Everybody just mute their phone. Everybody. Okay, I'm I'm gonna mute mine. I'm, I'm gonna mute mine. Okay. Can everybody please mute their phone just for a moment? Let me just share this with her. Thank you. Um, and Ayash, if you're online, let me know. I'm I'm waiting on you, Ayash, so we can get started. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure. I know Ayash, he, he's taking care of a few things. I'm just waiting on him and then we can get started. All right. Um, okay, so Laura, what, what, what's going on is that what the church is teaching is that you have a, a, a three and a half years uh, where this one man is going to come on the scene and this, because this is how they teach it, and, and he's going to be like a president, okay, and he's going to be. Uh, deceiving anybody, he's going to be deceiving the world uh, into uh, taking the mark of the beast. And then once we get to the next uh, half of the seven-year period, that last three and a half years, that's when he's going to turn on everybody, and he's going to be putting people under pressure to take this mark. And if you don't get this mark, you can't buy or sell. Okay, so therefore, you have two you have two doctrines that are being taught. You're having a pre-trib, which means before the seven-year period, the church will be raptured. And then you have another doctrine that says it's called, it teaches mid-tribulation, which means we will go through three and a half years of the tribulation, but before the Antichrist, which is this one man, turns against the people and causes them to take the mark of the beast, will be raptured out. So you have, And then you have post-tribulation, which means you go through the whole seven-year period. Okay, so I don't believe in seven-year period because the Bible's not teaching a seven-year tribulation period, but the Bible does teach that we go through the whole tribulation. The it whole tribulation. Yeah. yeah, it does. The Bible does teach that. 
Okay, and that's what we that's what you had, and that's what you we had talked about and you showed me and everything. So this yeah, right Matthew, here Yes. Yeah, when, yeah, because when you go through Matthew, it says that, uh, was it Matthew 24, uh, uh, starting in verse 29, mm-hmm. it, says in, it says immediately after the tribulation of, the, of those days that Christ is going to return. So immediately after. So after we go through the tribulation, then he's, then he's going to make his return. But we have to go through the tribulation period, the whole thing. So yeah. everybody is going to, everybody is going to be dealing with uh, this this uh, terrible time, everybody, you know, a lot of us will die. A lot of us, are, you know, I was sharing, you know, I was sharing, sharing that with you in Revelation 20, mm-hmm. verses 4 through 6, where it shows that the souls of those who were beheaded for Christ, these are those who made it into the first resurrection. It was resurrected. Resi- I can't even talk. Those who, they were. Verse 4 through 6. We can mm-hmm. go over there now. All right. Revelation chapter uh, 20, verse 4. Are you there? Yes. Okay. It says, And I saw a throne, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yeshua and for the word of the Most High, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. See, so we we all are going to go through the mm-hmm. tribulation period. Mm-hmm. All of us are going to go through. Mm-hmm. Oh, hold on one moment. Okay. Yeah, but she left. Well, that doesn't make sense. Hmm. I'm just trying to hide the future. I know. You there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. All right. Okay, so, you, yeah. so, so we're all going to go through the tribulation. The whole That's the whole right. earth is going to go through. It's those who endure until the end are, are, are the ones that's going to make it, the ones that's going to be saved. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know. Okay. So what I'll, what I'll do, what I'll do, um, but well, you're going to take the Hebrew Academy, right? Yes, I sure am. Okay, you'll get it. Because there's a whole lesson on the rapture doctrine. I mean, it, break, it breaks it down in detail. It breaks it down, you know. But if you're going to go through the the um, if you're going to go through the Hebrew Academy, you're going to get it. You're going to get that whole lesson on the Rapture doctrine because it goes through. I mean, it, it, it it's good. It really breaks it down. It gives you the understanding of the history, the origin of the Rapture doctrine. It, it gives you a lot. You know what I mean? Um, okay. It's really, it's really, really, it's a real good lesson. I'm just trying to really just show you a, a scripture right now, just for time, for time's sake, you know what I mean? That yeah, we're, we're, yeah, because we're all going to go through the tribulation. Uh, in fact, we're actually in it right now, you see, and that's mm-hmm. what the churches are not teaching us. We've been in the tribulation since Jacob's, I mean, I'm sorry, since uh, 70 AD, the fall of, of uh, the, uh, the tribe of Judah, the southern kingdom when the Roman Empire took over uh, Jerusalem in 70 AD, that's what started uh, the tribulation, or what you would call Jacob's trouble. Okay. Now, you see what I'm saying? And so we're still in trouble right now, and right now it's getting worse. The trouble is heightening. It's, it's coming into the point where we're going to start going through our great wars, like this war that's being set up between Iran and America. That mm-hmm. one's on the verge of, of being broken out. Uh, that's going to be, you know, nuclear war. Uh, okay. and, 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 and it's going to go into another war, okay? It's going to affect China, okay? And so it's, it, these wars are going to start getting worse and worse upon the earth. Then, then you're going to have the mark of the beast, 
which is going to uh, hit nationwide. I mean, I'm sorry, inter, uh, hit hit uh, 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 global. Okay, where uh, there will be you, you won't be able to buy or sell. That's right, you won't be able to okay. buy or sell. So, right, so they're they're going to put a freeze on all accounts as far as money is concerned. So it won't be any, you know money won't be any of any use. Okay, so this is going to hit everybody. Okay, and so we have to uh, be martyrs for Christ. You know, we're going to have to be. We're going to if, if we have to die out through starvation, that's how we that's how we go out. But we don't take the yeah. mark. We don't compromise. Okay. Right. So, you know, there there is no easy way out. Uh, they 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 teach that, but that's not true. That's, that that doesn't make sense. And 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 so right there, the churches are they are putting an identity to the nation of Israel. I thought it didn't matter. There's another thing. Right. If you tell me it's you're an Israelite, oh, that doesn't matter. Just accept Christ. But then again, they'll turn around and have these. Uh, these little pamphlets that say Jews for Jesus. <laughs> they got that. Well, I thought it didn't matter. So why are you identifying them? Why, why are you having these, uh, these gospel tracts that say Jesus for Jesus? It's just that if you say you are Jew, it doesn't matter. No. It doesn't matter. That's right. Because we're really, because they're looking at the ones that they feel that are. Right. And we're exactly. just making it up. It's just in our heads yeah. and we're just making it up. Right. And they have a ministry to, to reach those people. You know, they have a, I mean, they have a, they have ministry designed to reach. It's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, you can re, you can Google the Jews for Jesus. You know, so they are putting wow. an identity. They're putting an, an identity to them. I think I'm giving money to those people <laughs> over and over. <laughs> I'm all these different Israel groups and stuff. And <laughs> <laughs> you. And you and you didn't know. It's just like you didn't. You didn't know. Yeah. Helping the Jews yeah. get home, and I'm like, now I'm like, well, dang, <laughs> I'm trying to get home, and I gave all these people my money. You know don't what? make no. I'm good there though. I'm good. The most I know, because <laughs> I sure they won't be getting that. We know more. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, it's just sh- 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 everybody. Um, I'm on. I'm, this brother, I got. I'm sorry, I'm late. I had to get some things in order at the house, but uh, I'm here on the line. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Um, Shema Yisrael Alahaya Alahaya Nava Alahaya Achad. I mean, here Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Um, this Shema uh, Shalom. Uh, I know it's nine o'clock. Uh, who's breaking the lesson for the brothers? Uh, it's gonna be Dubai. 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 Okay. Who's bringing it for the sisters? Hello? Yeah, who's bringing it for the... Uh, shalom, oh, shalom, shalom, brother. That, that, that's, what I, that's what I was trying to find out. <laughs> really? Yeah, trying to find out who was going to bring it. Uh, I, I thought Kana was going to bring it, but she's uh, she's not bringing it uh, tonight, you know. No, 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 uh-huh. Yeah. I, I, I thought Rawathia was bringing it. Uh-oh. You uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> I, I could have sworn we talked about that last Shabbat, and you said that you were going to get one together. No, but I said that I, I was going to bring out a lesson, and I did. I, I brought it on to Franklin. I'll be working on another one. Uh, come on, uh, come on, sister. Uh, sister, uh, you, you ain't got the uh, you ain't got the lesson tonight. Hey, I had brought forth a lesson. I didn't know. I thought a sister was going to bring forth one. Come on, man. Come on. the sisters need you, right? Uh. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. Gone. I was just uh, sharing with my sister about um, there was some of you know she's asking question about the um, uh, tri- you know tribulation period about the seven year yeah. period. I was just sharing that, sharing with her. There is no seven year period. They, you know, but they they put that there. But the thing is, they're they're identifying a people. Called uh, Jews for Jesus. I'm sure you heard mm-hmm. that too. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. They they identify them because uh, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. But like, if we say we're the Jews, oh, uh, that doesn't matter. Yeah. That doesn't matter. Just accept Christ. But but I'm like looking at it right now. I'm like, it says Jews for Jesus. I'm like, well, so they are they are preaching to a people. They are yeah. identifying people. 
Exactly. So, so with their so with their teaching, and, and I'm just sharing this, uh, you know, for everybody. So the, basically, these these Jews for Jesus will be a part of the church, okay? And the church will be raptured out of here, and then you're going to be dealing with the nation of Israel, you know, because mm-hmm. Christ is going to be coming back for uh, his people, you know, and in and, and all those who, um, you know, uh, rejected him the first time, kind of like how they show in the movie Left Behind. Yeah. They show stuff like that, but that's not the way it's going to happen. So it's going to be everybody, every the whole world is going to go through. But see, here's the thing. Uh, has anyone ever thought about, look at what's going on in Syria, how they're decapitating people, they're cutting people's heads off, probably mm-hmm. right, right now. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, all over the Middle East, it is crazy. All over there the Middle East, they're doing some crazy stuff. Aren't they going through tribulation? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, so it's just that we're not, America is not where they are. So it's all about America. It's, it, 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 it's crazy. It's, it's kind of like, well, before, it's almost like to me, if you if you ask me, before it hits America, we'll be raptured out of here. It's like America is just too good to go through. And I say, what makes America so special? <laughs> what makes America so special, yeah. They're all I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Those people over there are dying left and right. Yep. Left and right. They really are. Mhm. And it's just it's just it's just showing that those the, the, those who follow Christ in those areas have to endure to the end. That's what he said. He who endures to the end will be saved. They're gonna have to be martyrs for Christ, just like we're gonna have to be martyrs for Christ when it hits us, because it's coming to us next. It's coming over here, and then if we, and those of us who flee out of America. Go ahead. All right, well, well, that's part of the whole lie. I mean, you know, America's going to sit back and watch watch the world go through hell, and they're too good to be touched because, you know, they got an op order from God to go and do all these things or whatever. And right. before you know it, you know, it's going to be. Okay? Um, mm-hmm. I mean, just the other day, I'm sitting there with my sister and them and this and that. You know, we were going over a bunch of stuff over my mother or whatever. And we kind of, you know, we kind of got on that, on that thing. And, you know, she was like, well, God's been blessing me. And, you know, she got a new house and car and all this other stuff. And I said, well, okay. I said, well, then what's going to happen, you know, when, you know, when they when, when they cut these uh, these accounts off? Well, what's going to happen then? What are you going to do? You know? And, you know, I'm I'm always I'm always telling them this and that. I've kind of backed off a little bit as far as getting angry with them. You know, because me and Brother Yash, we sit down and talk, and he was like, well, man, you know, just kind of give them time. But it's sad. You know, you're sitting here and you're looking at it, and these people, it's like that ostrich syndrome. Hey, there's trouble coming. Let me stick my head in this hole. Right. If I don't think that it don't see me. It's not happening. You know, and these people right. honestly think that, you know, it's not going to come here. Yes, it's coming here. As a matter of fact, oh, yeah. double force. Exactly. Okay. That's what it says. Oh, no, I don't know how you kill something twice, but hey, he can do it. And he gonna do it. Mhm. All right. Yeah, we 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 go into it. Uh, Laura, we we going to uh, Babylon and what's gonna happen? We were uh, we were doing it, but we just stopped for just temporarily, just to uh, bring out some other lessons. But we're gonna go back into uh, Jacob's trouble to show to show what's gonna happen. To, uh, to America, um, man, I know we got to go into our, uh, our, our our lesson. We got Brother Debaki has a good a good lesson. Um, let me see something. Let's see, yeah, we got to get into it. And there's no, I guess there's no sisters, huh? Do we have any sisters? <sighs> Sisters, that we can all uh, stay on this line uh, tonight. Um, 
How, how many sisters are online right now? Okay, it's me, Laura. Chantel. Randy. Okay. Tessa. Sure. Okay. And Kim and Lonnie. Oh, shalom, shalom. All right. Shalom. Who's that? Oh, it's just shalom. Okay. <laughs> shalom. Yeah. Uh, any other sisters online that haven't spoke out? I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Just trying to see what sisters online. Because we're going to be on my line. Uh, uh, Shalom, Mr. Kessa. Hello, Hello, Sister Kessa. How you doing? Shalom. Hello. Mm-hmm. Hi. <laughs> cool. Is your husband with you? No, he's knocked out. <laughs> okay, I understand. I understand. I understand. Well, hey, he's resting. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Good to hear you on the line. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, okay. so we got got this is online, okay. Um, well, before we start, um, you guys, if everybody can Google this. Uh, it says Iran sending warships close to U.S. borders. All right, published February 8, 2014. So you can Google that because that's prophetic. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, it shows how the Medes, will uh, send their their missiles toward America and and destroy America, okay, with nuclear warfare. So we're commanded to flee out of Babylon, okay, before the destruction hits. And we'll go down by fire, according to Revelation chapter 18. So we're commanded to to leave here before uh, before all the plagues hit. That's not the only plague. But that's the main play that's going to destroy everybody. That's here. That's left here. Okay. That's going to happen by Iran. They're called the Medes. So you can Google that. Iran sending warships close to U.S. borders. Published February 8, 2014. So it's it's happening. All right. It's happening. Yeah, Ramar. Now. Huh? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, yeah, Ramar went over there on the blog talk to from last week on Friday. <laughs> Okay, yeah, he's and R- Ramar is on point when it comes to Babylon. He, oh, <laughs> that's yeah. his, his expertise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it, and I, I'm just going to read just one little piece. It just says, in, 20, in 2012, Iran said it aims to put warships in international waters off the U.S. coast within the next few years and, and extend its reach as far as Antarctica. Okay, so there... That's that's their goal. So, and they're doing it. They're already, you know, they're they're already moving. So, all right. Um, so we're, you know, we gotta, you know, we have to get up out of here soon. All right. So, we're, we're, uh, Ayash and I, we're gonna be going over that. <clears throat> you know, dealing with Jacob's trouble. You know, um, and that's why, you know. We we got to flee, but we're gonna go over. You know, we're gonna go over Babylon. You know, who is Babylon? You know, because uh, that's important to know that most of us know, but we still need to just go over some, you know, some doctrine with it, some understanding with it. Okay. Right. So you can Google that. Everybody can Google that. You know, see it for themselves. Do some homework with it. And uh, prepare and, and, you know, prepare for your move, you know, prepare to leave. Because once once they uh, declare war, you know, you have a no-flying zone. So, you know, this is the time to start preparing to leave, you know. So Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. No-flying zone, so. So we gotta we gotta get up out of here while we can, and then of course, uh, uh, Obama is going for his third term. That hasn't been done since Roosevelt. Mm-hmm. So he okay. So that's, oh, that's going on. That, huh? I'm sorry. I, said, I didn't know that. I didn't know he was going for his third term. I mean, is he uh, 
I mean, is he going to get somebody or has he already been elected? Or pre selected? Well, it, it, it didn't say he was, it didn't say either one. It just says that he was uh, going for the, for, for his third term. Cause oh, wow. It okay. Has, it, has, right. it hasn't been done since Roosevelt. Because that's never, that's, that's unheard of. That's right. unheard of. Right, in know, modern times, yeah. In, in modern times, right. So this is what he wants to do. So I'm like, okay, what is he up to? So, you know, he, he we can expect to see him in office. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, the brother ain't going nowhere, huh? Nah, he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> he ain't going nowhere. But I, but um, but someone told me that they that they that they um, oh, what was it that they passed? Uh, I guess a bill years ago that you can't do that anymore. You can't run for three terms. I tried to find it. I didn't see it. Who said you couldn't go for three terms? That you can no longer run for three terms. I guess when since Roosevelt did it, that they weren't allowing that anymore. And that they passed some law or bill. I Googled it, but I couldn't find it. Yeah, I heard the same thing. I heard that he amended it because he served, I think, 12 years total. I think he did mm -hmm. three terms. Mm -hmm. He put an amendment to it. And I think that's why Obama's trying to overturn it because it was amended to begin with, and you can overturn another amendment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that sounds nice. He's, that's what he wants to do, and I think it's going to happen. You know? Um, mm -hmm. Now, here's another thing. You can also Google something else. Google something like um, drones over U.S. get okay by Congress. Drones oh, over U.S. get okay by Congress. Okay. Okay. So it talks about drones being in the sky. And um, it, it, uh, one part of it says, the agency, the agency projects that 30,000 drones could be in the nation's skies by 2020. So this is what Obama wants. He wants drones all, all over, you know. So why, why does he want that if he's not going to be in office? He's, that's, that's too far ahead. <laughs> a very valid point. Mm-hmm. Very valid. Yeah, that's what that's that's what he wants. I'm like, okay, man, this guy is, you know, it's too much. And 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 if he's not, then then uh, he's following, you know, the agenda. You know what I mean? But uh, if you ask me, he he's there's not going to be any more presidents after him. If you ask mm. me, he, he he's it. That's the last one. America. Oh, hey. Uh, hello? Yes. Hey, I, I'm sorry. I know we bring out some current events, but it's uh, almost 9.20. <laughs> I know. I, know. Yeah. I, just to, I just wanted to fill my uh, fill, fill her in, fill my sister in, you know. Do yeah, right. yeah. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. And uh, uh, Brother uh, DeBlock, um I'm ready, so we'll, so we'll pray. We'll, we'll pray. Uh, uh, Brother Ayaz, did you want to uh, lead us? or? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, for anyone that's uh, a first time on the line, uh, we do things according to Scripture. We do everything according to, according to Scripture, including prayer. Uh, when we do pray, uh, the Scriptures command that we that men have their hair uncovered, keep your head uncovered when you pray or prophesy. And it, it calls for women to have their hair covered when they pray or prophesy. That's according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And if there are any more questions concerning that, you know, uh, we can go through that um, after the lesson. But uh, we just ask that you, out of respect for Christ and not for us or our rules, these are coming straight from the Father and the Son themselves and out of Scripture. 
So uh, when everybody is ready to pray, please uh, respond in the affirmative. Uh, in Hebrew, yes is Khan, and no is La'a. Is everybody ready? Khan. Khan. Okay. All right. Wow. Uh, Father, Ahaya, Ashar, Ahaya, Bahashem, Yeshaya, Hamashiach, Horawak, HaKadash. Number one, we just want to thank you for blessing us and bringing us through this week. We know we live in some very trying times. We live in very evil times, Father. Wickedness going out throughout this world, but Father, you've kept us unspotted from the world. We're thankful that you've pulled us away from this world. We just ask, Father, that you would just grant, continue to grant us uh, grace, grant us uh, repentance, Father, and just continue to increase us in faith. Let us not be afraid for the things that are going on around us because we already know, Father, according to Scripture, that these things must come to pass. So, we trust and know that our end, Father, is already in your mind, and our end, Father, is to be to receive salvation, to receive a crown of life from Yeshua when he returns, Father. We pray, Father, that you would just keep us and give us the strength to endure whatever we must endure. And we just want to ask that you would bless us in the spirit to give you praise, Father, and to remember you and remember you first, to remember you foremost and only on your holy Shabbat, Father, even always and all days, Father. But the Holy Shabbat is higher than all of the days. We exalt you and we exalt your day, Father, and we bless you. And we pray that you would bless us in the spirit, that we would receive the word from Brother Zabak, that you would put your spirit in him, Father, that you would teach us through our brother. And we just thank you for, for giving us the light, Father, for giving us truth and setting us free. In the name is Yeshaya, HaMashiach, or Rawak, we thank you. Amen. 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 All right. All right, all right. How we doing? Good. So what? So what? Right. what? That's what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, before I get started, um, I know there's always a possibility of uh, new people being online. I've uh, I personally invited a couple people um, this week, and I know uh, we're always getting new people. So the very first thing I want to do really quick is just uh, cover the names that we use. Cover. Uh, the fact that we use Ahia instead of God and Yeshia instead of Jesus. Um, just really quick, if uh, we can go to Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. And we'll read uh, 13 through 15. Whatever, you're ready, Yak. You said Exodus 13 what? Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. Hey, the box, before you get started, the one book I got it good. You gonna Are you going through Josephus? Yes, sir. All right, let me get my book. Now, so make sure you have uh, Exodus, the... Um, uh, 70 through uh, 87, the chapter 7, second editors. Oh, oh I'll get that. Okay, can you please repeat that chapter again? Uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. Exodus 3 and 13. Okay, I'm there. Exodus chapter 3. Okay, Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. Yes, sir. It says, And Moses said unto the Most High, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, I shall say unto them, The power of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Verse 14. Yeah. And the Most High said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, have sent me unto you. 
verse 15, And the Most High said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Most High, the power of your fathers, the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Okay, so just uh, just to have that understanding of why we say that, um, you know, thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And so that's why we say Ahia, because Ahia is I am in Hebrew. And it continues the next verse to say, this is my name forever as a memorial for all generations. So that is why we use this name, um, just in case there's any confusion of why we use this name. Um, and then just to really quickly cover, um, I don't think we're really going to be using it at all, but uh, Christ uh, we call Yeshaya, and uh, Yeshaya in the Hebrew means my Savior. Um, so I just wanted to put those out there just in case if you hear us saying Ahaya and Yeshaya, um, that's what we're doing. It's God and um, what you would call Jesus, um, we would call my Savior. So um, let's go ahead and jump into the lesson. Uh, the very first thing I want to do, I want to start off with a question. Um, we all know Christ came to save us, um, and we know Christ saves, but my question is, what did he come to save us from? Uh, the most high's wrath. This I know. Uh. You're not supposed to say that. I already told you. <laughs> I had to. I've been waiting for this one. You see it. The sin. Okay, so, the sin. Uh, uh, a lot of people say, yeah, he came to save us from sin. He came to save us from demons. He came to save us from the devil. Um, but ultimately, Ahia came to, uh, uh, Christ, Yeshia came to save us from Ahia's wrath. From the Father's wrath is what he came to save us from. Um, because Ahia's wrath is a scary thing. So um, we're going to go ahead and just jump right into Ahia's wrath, and that's what this lesson is about. It is about the Father's wrath. Um, so we're going to go ahead, the very first verse we're going to start at, we're going to start at Nahum, chapter 1, and we're going to do verse 2 through 8. That's in the Old Testament, Nahum. All right. Nahum. Sam chapter 1, verse 2 through 8. Yes, sir. All right. When everyone gets there, can you say con? Con. Yes. All right. Con. Well, uh, oh, man, all right. Con, con, con. All right, all right. I, got, I had a lot, I had a lot of I in there, so... <laughs> Come on, come on. All right. Con, you good, Huck. Okay. Nahum, chapter 1, starting at verse 2. The Most High is jealous, and the Most High revenges. The Most High revenges and is furious. The Most High will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserves wrath for his enemies. The Most High is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all equip the wicked. The Most High has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry, and dryeth up all the rivers. Bashan languishes, and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languishes. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The all right, hold, high... uh, hold on, okay. hold on right there. Read, read verse 6 again for me. All right. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger. His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. 
Man, man. All right, keep going. Verse 7. The Most High is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. All right, so this is... uh... This is definitely a place we don't want to be. You know, we we don't want to be in the way of his wrath. Um, You know, verse 6, who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? No one, no one can stand in the way of Ahia's anger. Um, It's just, it's, it's just an amazing thing. I mean, luckily for us, you know what, you know, it's said up there that he is slow to anger. But a lot of times and a lot of things we do, we're kindling his wrath against us. The things that we continue to do and and how we abuse grace, you know, we need to keep in mind that we're storing up punishment for ourselves. And this is where we're lining ourselves up with. We don't want to line ourselves up with his fury. We don't want his fury to be poured out like fire upon us. Um you know he's he's an amazing God, but we need to not mess with him, <laughs> if that makes sense. You know we need to not kindle his wrath against us. Uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter ten, verse thirty-one, really quick. All right. Hebrews chapter 10, 10, verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. One more time. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. It is a fearful thing. You do not want to find yourself in his hands when his wrath is against you. It is a fearful thing to find yourself in the hands of the Father. Okay, it's it's not a great place. When his wrath is kindled against you, you don't want to be in his hands. Um, let's go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. All right. All right, we're at Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That is why it's such a fearful thing to be in his hands, you know, when, when his wrath is kindled against you. It's a fearful thing to be in his hands when his wrath is kindled against you. Obviously, if his wrath isn't a kindled against you, it's a comforting thing to be in his hands. But... That verse isn't talking about, you know, if his wrath isn't kindled against you. Um, it's a fearful thing to be in his hands because only the Father, only the Father can destroy both body and soul. And so it's important that we fear him and and that, you know, we understand that, you know, Christ came to save us from the Father's wrath. And so let's uh, let's go to Romans chapter 2 really quick. We're going to do five through nine. And the thing oh, is, is uh, while we're going there, you know, too many people play with grace. You know, oh, I've got grace, I'm covered, or you know, I, I I'm, I'm really addicted to this thing, so God understands. You know, too many people play with grace, and 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 I hear too often. Oh, we got grace. Oh, we got grace. We're covered by grace. Um, but you got to understand, when you play with grace, what you're doing is is you're, you're abusing grace and you're storing up wrath. You're storing up his wrath against you. Um, so let's read Romans 2, 5 through 9. All right, Romans chapter 2, starting at verse 5. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart 
treasureth up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of the Most High, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious, contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. All right. So for everyone who doesn't obey the truth, doesn't obey his laws and his commandments, there is indignation and wrath just waiting for you. We can't just say, you know, oh, I'm covered by grace and keep living sinful ways, okay? Um, really quick, I'm going to show you a, a quick example. Um, I didn't want to go into too many examples of the highest wrath, um, but here's just one really quick example. If we go to Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 17. Okay. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 17. And, hold on, we got an echo going. Or do, do that verse 16. That would be sorry. Do a 16 and 17. Oh, 16, okay. Yeah. All right. Therefore, thus saith the Most High Power, Behold, I will stretch out mine hand upon the Philistines, and I will cut off the uh, Sheratim and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. And I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Most High when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. All right, so the last thing we want to do is find ourselves in the way of his vengeance. Okay, the Philistines here, you know, the Most High said he's going to stretch his hand out upon them, and they're going to know he's the Most High Power. They're, they're going to feel his vengeance, they're going to feel his wrath, and they're going to know by the time he's done with them, that they done screwed up. All right. So um, a, a lot of times I think when uh, when we think about the highest wrath, we think about uh, a physical punishment or maybe a, a financial punishment or even death. You know, may, maybe it'll, it'll even cause us death. But it's so much more than that. When the most highest wrath comes against us, there is literally hell to pay. So um, let's go ahead and jump into it, and let's get into Luke chapter 16. Hmm. All right. All right. And we're going to do verse, verse 19 through 31. All right, all right. Let me know when you guys get there to say con. Con. Right. Con. Con. All right, all right. Con. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at, at his gate full of swords and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sword. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham okay, hold on. said... Hold, hold on right, right there. And so I, I just um, I want to paint the picture that, one, this is Christ speaking. You know, Christ right here is, is speaking, and this is Christ describing what happens when we die. This isn't just a parable. This is what actually happens. Um, this is this is they're, they're in the same place. Both these places you have hell and you have 
Abraham's bosom, and they're both in the center of the the, the earth. They're they're both in the center, and so you can you can see each one. If you're in Abraham's bosom, you can see across, and you can see the people who are in torment, and vice versa. It shows you right here that this rich man was able to look up and see Lazarus over in in Abraham's bosom, in you know basically uh, in peace. And so, um, just to show that, you know, it's it's in the same place. And so, but one's to the left and one's to the right. And there's a big separation in the middle. We'll get into the separation here if uh, you want to go ahead and continue. All right. Uh, verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fit, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that that would come from them. Then Wait, hold on. I, I think we uh, I think we skipped uh, twenty four and twenty five. Oh, did I? Oh, oh, okay. Excuse me, excuse me, Salakia. Uh, okay, let's go to verse twenty four. Yeah. Uh, let me. You know, let me just start at verse twenty three, and I'll read on down. Okay. Uh, verse twenty three. And in hell he lifts up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Okay, so so really quick, I want to uh, talk about this great gulf fix, um, or also it's it's called a a chasm. Okay, so, so this great gulf fix is the lake of fire, which is the second death. Um... Hold, hold this, hold Luke 16, and if you can go to Revelations 20 really quick, it would be a Revelations 20, verse 14 and 15. All right. Just so we can see what this great gulf fix is. Oh, you said 20 or 21? Revelations 20. 20. Okay, thank you. Yep, and then it will be verse 14 and 15. All right. All right. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The lake of, uh, this is the second death, the lake of fire. Hold on. Let me try I'm in the right. Okay, no wonder. Hold on. I got the wrong version. Excuse me. Excuse me, people. Let me get the right version for you. Okay, let me read on down. Okay. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay, so so the lake of fire is... (coughs) Excuse me. Uh, The the lake of fire is that great chasm, that, that great gulf fix that separates hell from Abraham's bosom. And that's why it says you you can't cross over. You know, the people in Abraham's bosom who has, you know, pity for those that they see suffering over in hell, they couldn't pass over if they wanted to because they've got that great lake of fire right there. And same thing, anyone who was in hell and wanted to try to attempt to get over to Abraham's bosom, they can't because they have the lake of fire right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on back to Luke 16. All right. Okay. Want me to read that over? Uh, Yeah, if you want to read 26 again, yeah. Okay. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from this to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. 
For I have five brethren that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be, be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. All right. So um, there you have it. It's just like he wanted he wanted them to say, hey, if you sent someone from the dead, my brothers would believe me because he knew his brothers were going to be heading to the same place he's at, and he wanted to save his brothers. But the thing is, Abraham said, hey, look, they have Moses and the prophets. You, you, they have the same word that the righteous have. They have just chose to not believe or to not you know follow the laws to not follow the commandments even though one rose from the dead christ even though christ rose from the dead came back and said hey look i'm alive they still don't want to believe and they still don't want to keep the laws they still don't want to keep the commandments um and so it's just like you know that's that's the same thing it's like we've got moses so we've got the prophets we've got the scripture right here so we've got no excuse. There is no excuse. If, if you know, you know, a high up forbid, we end up on the wrong side and we're burning in torment. There is no excuse because we have no Moses, so we have the prophets, and we just chose not to listen. All right. So, so to get further understanding, we're going to go a couple more places on hell. Uh, the first place we're going to go, we're going to go into Second Edris. Uh, this is in the Apocrypha, and so, but um, in the original Apocrypha, um, there's 70 verses missing at the end of 2nd Edris, verse 7. And so you have to have the extended Apocrypha um, to uh, get these 70 verses. Right, let me get that for you. And so... Uh, Hey, um, really quick. Hey, did you want to go to uh, Second Edges fourteen to show how the seventy verses were taken out? Uh, actually, that might be pretty good. Uh, let's see. Okay. So everyone yeah. at the end of your pocket club, just turn to uh, Second Edges chapter fourteen, verse forty-four. Um, let me see something. Uh, probably may need to go up a little bit. Let me see. Uh, 42? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we're at uh, Second Ezra in your Apocrypha. Uh, if we have anybody on the line for your first time tonight and you don't have an Apocrypha, the, the Apocrypha is scripture. It was removed out of the Bible uh, by the Vatican and the uh, Protestant uh, churches. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to read from it. It was in the original 1611 King James Bible. So you're going to need this to have a complete Bible. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, we're going to start at Second Ezra, uh, chapter four, 14, verse 42. All right. It says, the highest gave understanding unto the five men. Can, can er, those who are uh, online, can everyone please mute their phone? Please mute your phones. Thank you. Please, can you guys please mute your phones? Whoever that is. Thank you. Our second Ezra chapter 14, verse 42. The highest gave understanding unto the five men, and they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that were told, which they knew not. And they sat 40 days, and they wrote in the day, 
and at night they ate bread. As for me, I spake in the day, and I held not my tongue by night. In 40 days, they wrote 204 books. And it came to pass when the 40 days were filled that the highest spake, saying, The first that thou hast written, publish open, openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. But keep the 70 last, that they may deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. For in them is the spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. And I did so. All right. So this right here is showing um, that these 70 verses were deliberately taken out, um, basically until it was time for them to be revealed, and they were just recently found. And so these 70 verses give a more detailed breakdown of hell and Abraham's bosom. Okay, so what we're going to do, if you have the extended um, chapter 7 in the in, uh, second address, that's what we're going to go into right now. We're going to start at um, verse 70, and we're going to go through 87. So 70 through 87. Let me, let me pull that one up. <laughs> Give me one moment. Mm -hmm. All right. So those uh oh, hold on one moment. Hold on, hold on. Okay, almost there. Okay, those who don't have an, an, what you'll need is the annotated apocrypha. You, it's, it's, uh, you can get it by Cambridge. Uh, can, the, it's called the Cambridge Annotated Study Apocrypha. You can order them online. Cambridge Annotated Study Apocrypha. And you'll need that to pick up the seventy, the extra seventy uh, verses that go along with uh, your uh, apocrypha. When you go into Second Ezra, all right, all right. So we're going to start at verse seventy. Let me get there. All right. It says, "He answered me and said, When the Most High made the world and Adam and all who uh, have come down from Him, He prepared the He prepared the judgment and the things that pertain to the judgment." But now understand from your own words, for you have said that the mind grows with us. For this reason, therefore, those who live on earth shall be tormented, because though they had understanding, they committed iniquity. And though okay, they hold on. Hold, hold on okay. right there. Um, All right. So I want to point out, the first, you know, before the Most High made the world and made Adam, the first thing he did was he prepared the judgment. He 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 made hell first, and then he created the rest. Um, and then right here, where we just stopped right here, it says, "Though they understand, though they had understanding, they committed iniquity." Now I want to bring up the the um, the word iniquity in the strong accordance to give you the Greek understanding. Um, it's G four fifty eight. And so iniquity, so you understand what iniquity is, because it says, though they had understanding, they still committed iniquity. So these are the people who are burning in hell, hell the people who committed the, this iniquity. So let's find out what iniquity is. So if you go into the Strong's, like I said, it's uh, G458, and it says, violation of law, wickedness, unrighteousness, transgression of law, transgression of the law and it says it refers not to one living without law but to one who acts contrary to the law okay so basically when it's saying that you know they had understanding but they committed iniquity that means that they did not keep the laws and the commandments all right go ahead and uh, continue all right so it says because though they had understanding, they committed in iniquity, and though they received the commandments, they did not keep them, and though they obtained the law, 
they dealt unfaithfully with what they received. What then will they have to say in the judgment? Or how will they answer in the last time? How long will the Most High, I mean, how long the Most High has been patient with those who inhabit the world? And not for their sake, but because of the times that he has foreordained. All right, I'm in verse 75. I answered and said, if I have found favor in your sight, O Ahia, show this also to your servant, whether apt death, as soon as every one of us yields up the soul, we shall be kept in rest until those times uh, come when you will renew the creation, or whether we shall be tormented at once. He answered okay, me and so, said, so hold on right there. Okay. So basically the same we'll either be at rest or we will be in torment at once. Okay, so we're either going to be in rest or we're going to be in torment. Okay, it's one or the other. Okay, go ahead and continue. Verse 76. He answered me and said, I will show you that also, but do not include yourself with those uh, who, who have shown scorn or number yourself among those who are tormented. For you have a treasure of work stored up with the Most High, but it will not be shown to you until the last time. Now concerning death, the teaching is when the, when the decisive cre decree has gone out from the Most High that a person shall die, as the spirit leaves the body to return again to him who gave it. First of all, it adores the glory of the Most High. If it is one of those who have shown scorn and have not kept the way of the Most High, who have despised his law and hated those who fear the Most High, such spirits shall not enter into habitation, but shall immediately wander about in torment, always grieving and sad in seven ways. Okay, so now we're, we're going to get into seven ways, seven torments, that you're going to find in, in, in hell. I mean, obviously, outside of being tortured and the heat, there's going to be seven of these torments that are going to be coming upon you. And one other thing I want to point out in verse 78, it says, when the decisive decree, the decree has gone forth from the Most High, a man shall die. So no one dies unless the Most High gave the decree. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll get into each way. Um, I'll break down each individual way. So after each way, if you want to go ahead and stop, I'll break it down, then we'll go into the next. So the first way. All right. First, verse 81. The first way, because they have scorned the law of the Most High. Okay, so, so when you're in hell, one of your torments, you're going to be sitting there thinking, how is it that I did not keep the laws? This is going to be a torment to you. You're going to be burning. You're going to be getting tortured. And another one of your tortures, one of the first ways you're going to be getting tortured is how could I not have kept the laws? Go ahead with the second way. Verse 82, the second way, because they cannot now make a good repentance so that they may live. Okay, so another thing that you're going to be tormented down there is now you can't make a you can't make a repentance. It's too late. If if we can't get it right here, we need to understand that life here on earth isn't nothing but a finger snap compared to eternity. And if if we can't get it right here, one of the ways you're going to be tormented as hell is that now you know there's no repentance. There is nothing you can do now to get out of it. You, that is your eternity now. You're, you're, you're going to be eternally plagued by the fact that now there's nothing you can do about it. You're there, and you're there forever now. Go ahead with the third way. Verse 3, the, I mean, verse 83, the third way, they shall see the reward laid up for those who have trusted the covenants of the Most High. Okay, so this goes back to what we were discussing earlier with Luke when, when Christ was describing it. Um, you can see each other. 
hell, you know, uh, the, the rich man looked up and he can see Lazarus at rest in Abraham's bosom. And so that's going to be another way is that you're going to see the other people's rewards who trusted in the covenants, who followed the laws, who kept the commandments. Go ahead with number uh, four, number four. Verse 84, the fourth way they could, they shall consider the torment laid up for themselves in the last day. Okay, so that goes back to uh, Revelation chapter 20. Basically, the only thing these people have to look forward to now is the second death, that lake of fire that's separating them. That's, that's the only thing they have to look forward to right now. They're, they're in hell, and you've got to understand, every second is like an eternity there. And there's people who have been there for 2,000 years plus, and every single second is like an eternity. And the only thing they have to look forward to right now is that final judgment is being thrown into the lake of fire. Go ahead with number five. Verse 85, the fifth way, they shall see how the habitations of the others are guarded by angels in profound quiet. Okay, so that's talking about Abraham's bosom. So across in Abraham's bosom, you, you are guarded by profound quiet. There's a profound peace. Over there, you're you're being held by angels in a profound quiet, and the people over there being tormented are watching you in a profound peace. Go ahead with the sixth way. Verse 86. The sixth way, they shall see how some of them will cross over into torment. Okay. And so this is uh, what the rich man was talking about, how his five brothers... He, they're they're going to see more people. They're going to see more people coming into the same torment that they're in. All right, let's go into the seventh in uh, the worst way. Verse 87, the seventh way, which is worse than all the ways that have been mentioned, because they shall utterly waste away in confusion and be consumed with shame and shall wither with fear at seeing the glory of the Most High in whose presence they sinned while they were alive, and in whose presence they are to be judged in the last time. So when you're there, when you're in hell, you can see the Most High. You can see his glory. You can see his awesomeness, his wonder. And all you're going to be thinking yourself is, how could I possibly have believed he did not exist? How could I have not believed? How could I have not kept the laws and commandments for such a short amount of time, for 80 years? I mean, that's nothing, like I said, but a finger snap compared to eternity. Um, it's, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be consumed with shame and fear seeing the glory of the Most High and how you sinned against him. And obviously, these seven are on top of the eternal flames and the torment that you're getting from demons that are down there as well. Um, so now, right now, we're going to go into the book of Josephus. All right. Um, basically, uh, the book of Josephus, um, it's an exact, um, an exact out of Josephus dis a disclosure to the Greeks concerning Hades. So Josephus was uh gave a very detailed breakdown of what Hades is. Um and we're gonna go ahead and read out of that. Um uh, we're gonna go ahead and start at uh go ahead just start at the top, start at verse one. All right. Um you mind if I I just give him a little just a little insight on him. Yes sir. Just so they'll know who he is. Uh uh okay I recommend everybody get it. It's called Josephus, the Complete Works. You can get it online. Josephus, the Complete Works. All right. And uh, just so, just so you, those who may have never never heard of him or read his uh, books, I'll just give you his background. It says, born Josephus, Ben uh, Matthias, into a family of priests. He became a priest himself as a young man. He had spent time with, with an Essene sect before becoming a Pharisee at age 19. 
impressed by the undefeatable power of Rome. He discouraged the growing uh, Jewish rebellion to no avail. Finally, he was swept up in the uh, rebellion and was appointed as the commander of Galilee. When Jerusalem was destroyed, he was taken as a prisoner to Rome. His life was spared because he predicted that uh, Vespasian would become emperor. When his prediction came true, two years later, Josephus was released, and he adopted the family name of the emperor uh, Flavius. In AD 70, he marched with Vespasian's son Titus on Jerusalem, which rendered him an unforgivable a traitor in the eyes of some of his people, which were the Jews, because he was an Israelite. Afterwards, he retired to Rome, became a Roman citizen, and spent his days writing about his life and his exploits. Okay, so in a nutshell, Josephus wrote about his people. Okay, this was his his opportunity to write about his people, okay, um, because Israel went under captivity to the Roman Empire during the 70 A.D., and what he did, he became a historian, and he wrote uh, uh, of all the atrocities that happened to his people, uh, the Israelites under the Roman Empire. And then he also wrote about Hill, which is uh, what our brother Debak Amath is getting ready to go into. All right. So I just want you to read some of his int introduction so you know who he is, a little background on him. All right. Uh, the water. Oh, you're welcome, brother. And uh, we're, we're, we're going, uh, those who, who have the complete works of Josephus, we're going to the back of the book. It's called An Extract Out of Josephus' Discourse to the Greeks Concerning Hades. Josephus' Discourse to the Greeks Concerning Hades. All right. In the back of your book, you'll find it on page... 974 in the very back of the book, those who have the complete works of Josephus. Page 974. I'm not sure which, where you want to go. Did you want to start from... Uh, yeah, just start at the beginning of verse 1. Just start right at the top where it says, uh, Now is to Hades. Where are y'all at again? Oh. I'm sorry. We're, we're in the complete works of Josephus, the book. On, yes, I got uh, Oh, you have that? Okay, we're at. Yeah, we're we're, we're going to start on on uh, paragraph one on page nine seventy four. Depends on what version that that that, that you have. Uh, it's the if, complete works, but mine only goes to uh, seven seven seven. If if, if you have the I have, if you I have, have the, huh? I have the blue. I have the blue book with the Josephus yes. with the coin on the front. I believe that's okay. the Cambridge edition. Yeah, I have that one. Yeah, it's in there. You have, to, you have to go to your no, index. Have the underbridge. I have the underbridge, Josephus, the blue book. Yeah, I got it. It's in yeah, the you back. Got, okay. Yes, yes, it's in the back. You can go to your index. As long as you have the complete work of Josephus, it should be in there. It's in um, there, yeah. It's in there, okay. And 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 uh, Ant, is that you, Anthony? Also, yes, sir. Joseph? Okay. Did Did you find it? Uh, I'm trying to look in the index where, like, what 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 chapter were y'all in? Like, it, it it'll say uh, go go to uh, go to the uh, well when you look on your uh, index it'll say an extract out of out of Josephus' discourse to yeah. the Greek concerning Hayes. You'll see it. Mine says page nine seventy four, but yours could say something different. If you have, do you have the? Uh, uh, I have the unabridged mine. Well, mine starts at uh, eight thirteen in the back. Thirteen, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. The unabridged version. Yeah. Unabridged. Yeah, his is different. I think. Uh, yeah, mine's black. It got like little orange stripes, orange and gray stripes on it. This is work oh. Josephine. Okay. Uh, well, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read on, but it's there. It's there. Yeah, I'll find it. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna write it down, and I'll find it. I have it. All right. Yeah. All right. 
All right, give me one moment here. Let me see something. Little charge on my computer. Uh, okay. And by the way, I'm calling from um, I'm calling from uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, beautiful. Sh- shalom, brother. Shalom. All right, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna start on uh, paragraph one. It says, "Now, now as to hate, wherein the souls of the righteous and unrighteous are detained." Okay, right there. Hold on a second. Okay. So that just shows again, the souls for the righteous and unrighteous are detained. I just really want to point out the fact that because I I know a lot of times, especially in the Christian church, where where we're misled and, and everyone said, Oh, they're up in heaven right now or oh they're they're in a better place and yeah, if they're in Abraham's bosom, of course they're in a better place. But I just I really want to make it clear to the fact that all three of these places that I've gone in into Luke, into Edris, uh second Edris and now into Josephus, they're all showing that the righteous and unrighteous all go to the center of the earth. But there's two ways to go, one to the left and one to the right. Okay, so I just really want to make sure to point that out. So the righteous and unrighteous are detained there. Uh, continue. I'm going to read that part over. Okay. Now as to hate, wherein the souls of the righteous and unrighteous are detained, it is necessary to speak of it. Hades is a place uh, in the world not regularly finished, a subterraneous region wherein the light of this world does not shine. From which circumstance that in this uh, region the light does not shine, it cannot be, but it cannot be, but there must be in it perpetual darkness. This region is allotted as a place of custody for souls, in which angels are appointed as guardians to them who distribute to them temporary punishment agreeable to everyone's behavior and manners. Okay, so hold up right there. So, um, so right there it shows you basically this is at the center of this. The, it's at the center of the earth. It's it's at the ores at the earth's core. Um, there, there's no light there. It shows that it's here on earth. It's in the earth. And um, then right there where it says in which angels are appointed as guardians to them, who distribute to them temporary punishments. And so we have fallen angels in hell that are waiting to um, distribute punishment. Um, and right here, I, I want to quote Rikarshiar. Um Elder Rikarshiar said, he said that, we go, you know, you get down there and there's a demon that's been waiting 1,500 years for you. And so there are fallen angels in hell and they have been assigned to punish you. And so not only, obviously, we know about the flames, we know about the heat, we went over the seven things in Edris that talks about, you know, that we're going to be tormented by, but now it's even showing here that there's going to be a fallen angel, a demon there that is that has been assigned to punish you. Um, go ahead, uh, continue with paragraph two. All right, we're at paragraph two. In this region, there is a certain place set apart as a lake of unquenchable fire, wherein we suppose no one has hitherto been cast. But it okay, is prepared. Okay, so that's talking about that's talking about the the lake of fire. That's talking about the the center region, the second death, Revelation chapter twenty, where no one has been cast yet. Okay? Go ahead, uh, continue. All right. Uh, but it is prepared for a day of foredetermined four by the Most High in which one righteous sentence shall deservedly be passed upon all men when the unjust and those that have been disobedient to the Most High have and have given honor to such idols as have been the vain operations of the hands of men, as to the Most High himself, shall be adjudged to this everlasting punishment as having been the uh, the causes of defilement, 
while the just shall obtain an incorruptible and never fading kingdom. These are now indeed confined in Hades, but not in the same place wherein the unjust are confined. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's not, yeah, it's not the same place. It shows that it's not going to be the same place. So paragraph three is going to break down a little bit further. All right, paragraph three. For there is one descent into this region at whose gate we believe there stands an archangel with an host, which gate, when those pass through, uh, through that are conducted down by the angels appointed over souls. They do not go the same way, but the just are guided, guarded to the right hand and are led with hymns sung by the angels appointed over that place unto a region of light in which the just have dwelt from the beginning of the world. Not okay. the strange... Oh, sorry. You, you keep going. Okay. Uh, not constrained by necessity, but ever enjoying the prospect of the good things they see and rejoice in the expectation of those new enjoyments, <clears throat> which will be peculiar to every one of them, and esteeming those things beyond uh, what we have here, with whom there is no place of toil, no bur- no burning heat, no piercing cold, nor nor any briers there, but but the countenance of of the fathers and of the just, which they see always smiles upon them, while they wait for that rest and eternal new life in heaven, which is to succeed this region, this place we call the bosom of Abraham. Okay, so right there, so this is Abraham's bosom. Okay, Christ talked about this. Second Edris talked about this. And so it's all lining up. It's all the same thing. So Abraham's bosom, so so we pass, and we pass in a righteous state. We keep the laws. We keep the commandments. This is what we have to look forward to. Angels are going to guide us with hymns. We're going we're, we're, we're gonna to hear singing. We're going to be guided into this place of, of comfort. It's, I mean, I'll tell you what, I just kind of got goosebumps a little bit, you know, hearing this, like, that sounds mm-hmm. awesome, you know, mm-hmm. and, and we're going to go into to this rest while we just wait for eternal life, for, for the new heaven. So mm-hmm. we're just going to be in this, this place of amazing rest, angels singing, Abraham's bosom, waiting for the end, waiting for earth to go ahead and end, waiting for Christ to come back and and bring us back into the new heaven. Okay, so, uh, and if we don't go into Abraham's bosom, uh, paragraph four is going to tell you a little bit more about hell. And so, oh, and then also it shows, you know, that it goes to the right. Okay, so it's all one place. But if we go to the right, we're going to Abraham's bosom. And so now if we go to the left, we're going to see where the uh, left uh, takes us. All right, paragraph four. But as to the unjust, they are dragged by force to the left hand by the angels allotted for punishment, no longer going with a good will, but as prisoners driven by violence to whom are sent the angels appointed over them to reproach them and threaten them with their terrible looks and to thrust them down, still downward. Now those angels that are set over these souls drag them into the neighborhood of hell itself. Okay, hold on right there. Hold on right there. I'm sorry to keep interrupting you. Um, Go ahead, go ahead. But this is just, they're dragged (laughs) by force. They're dragged by force to the left hand by the angels allotted for punishment. No longer going with goodwill, so you're you're not walking. You're 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 being drugged against your will, but as prisoners driven by violence. Um, I don't know how many of you have ever been in been in or seen a very violent situation. Um, I know I know we've got some people who've been in war who've uh, you know probably seen some stuff that they don't even want to talk about. Um, 
and even on TV, we've seen some really violent things. I mean, you know, a couple of Sabbaths back, you know, Azan, you know, showed that one video of the violence, you know, happening over there where the man got beheaded. Um, that type of violence, in my opinion, will be like tickle fights compared to the violence you're going to be experiencing to this. This is going to be unbelievable violence. These angels violently, maliciously dragging you down. And then not only are these angels, but it says um, that you're driven by violence. To whom are sent the angels appointed over them. So that means it's going to be your guardian angels. Your your angels that were supposed to be looking out for you, and, but you chose to do wickedness, are now viciously and violently dragging you ever downwards, 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 off to the left into hell. Uh, you want to go ahead and just uh, start at the top again and then keep on reading? Uh, uh, for, uh, uh, paragraph 4. Mm-hmm. But as to the unjust, they are dragged by force to the left hand by the angels allotted for punishment, no longer going with a good will, but as prisoners driven by violence, to whom are sent the angels appointed over them to reproach, to reproach them and threaten them with their terrible looks, and to thr- and to thrust them still downward. Now those angels that are sent over these souls drag them into the neighborhood of hell itself, who when they are hard by it continually hear the noise of it and do not stand clear of the hot vapor itself. Okay, so after violently being dragged down there, and you're probably already peeing yourself and uh, just absolutely terrified out of your mind like you would not ever believe, the further and further down you get violently dragged, now you start hearing the noise of hell. You start hearing the screaming, the weeping, the gnashing of teeth. I mean, it's mm-hmm. man. I mean, this is deep. Mm-hmm. You, you, deep. You, as you're getting closer down there, now you start hearing it. You're not even there yet, but you're being violently ripped downwards by by angels. And then the closer you get, you start hearing it, and then you start feeling the heat. You, you're, you're not even there yet, and you can't even stand clear of the vapor, of the hot vapor coming out of hell. Go ahead, keep going. But when they have a nearer view of this spectacle, spectacle as of a terrible and exceeding great prospect of fire, they are struck with a fearful expectation of a future judgment and and an effect punished thereby. And not only so, but where they see the place or choir of the fathers and of the just, even hereby are they punished for a chaos deep and large is fixed between them insomuch that a just man that has compassion upon them cannot be admitted, nor can one that is unjust, if he were bold enough to attempt it, pass over it. Okay, so this this even shows about what what Abraham was saying, you know, to the rich man. You know, it's like Lazarus couldn't go over there even if he wanted to, because you got that great gulf fix, you got that lake of fire right in the middle. And so, you know, someone in Abraham's bosom who had compassion for them, he couldn't go over there and help them out anyways because there's that great goal fix. And then same thing, someone who really, I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone would be fleeing out of hell if they could, <laughs> you know, right. they, they can't because there's that great goal fix, you know. So um, basically we're going to uh, um, paragraph five. I just wanted to read just a little bit out of it. And it says, this is the discourse concerning Hades, wherein the souls of all men are confined until a proper season, which Ahia hath determined. Okay, so this is this is a place that all men go, but some go to the left, most go to the, I mean, some go to the right, most go to the left. 
Okay, so so it's it's all the same place, um, and every every person who dies goes to this this Hades that they're talking about, but we hopefully go to Abraham's bosom, and there's obviously other people who are going to be going to hell. Okay, so um, really quick, I want to jump down to uh, paragraph ch- uh, paragraph six. Um, right. Read a little bit of that, and then uh, we'll go back into the Bible. All right. We're at paragraph six. <laughs> For all men, the just as well as the unjust, shall be brought before the Most High, or God the Word. Or t- now I'm going to read that again. I hope everybody caught that. Paragraph six. Mm-hmm. For all men, the just as well as the unjust, shall be brought before God the word for to him okay. have, mm-hmm. oh, I'm sorry. So we we all know the word is Christ. And so God the Word is Christ. So we're the just and the unjust are going to be brought before Christ. Alright, continue. For to him hath the Father committed all judgment, and he in order to fulfill the will of his Father shall come as judge whom we call Christ. Mm-hmm. For Minos and uh, Rathmantus are not for judges, as you Greeks do suppose, but he whom the Most High, even the Father, has glorified, concerning whom we have elsewhere given a more particular account for the sake of those who seek after truth. This person exercising the righteous judgment of the Father towards all men has prepared a just sentence for everyone according to his work at whose judgment seat uh, when all men and angels and demons shall stand, they will send forth one voice and say, uh, just is thy judgment. Uh, the, the rejoinder to which will bring a just sentence um, upon both parties by giving justly to those that have done well and everlasting uh, fruition, but allotting to the lovers of wicked works eternal punishment. To these belongs the unquenchable fire, and that without end, and a certain fiery worm never dying, and not destroying the body, but continuing its eruption out of the body with never ceasing grief. Neither will sleep give ease to these men, nor will the night afford them comfort. Death will not free them from their punishment, nor will the interceding prayers of their kindred profit them. For the okay. Just no- can you... Uh- can you read that part one more time where it says, to these belong the unquenchable fire? Yes, yes. Uh, I might as well just start with uh, j- just is thy judgment. <laughs> okay. Just is thy judgment, the rejoinder to which will bring a just sentence upon both parties by giving justly to those that have done well and everlasting fruition, but allotting to the lovers of wicked works eternal punishment. To these belong the unquenchable fire, and without end, and a certain fiery worm never dying, and not destroying the body, but continuing its eruption out of the body with never ceasing grief. Neither will sleep give ease to these men, nor will the night afford them comfort. Death will not free them from their punishment, nor will the interceding prayers of their kindred profit them. Okay. So, you know, but allotting to the lovers of wicked works eternal punishment. This is eternal. You know, they'll belong to the unquenchable fires. So you're going to have worms that will never die, continuously feasting on you, you won't die from this. You know, it's a never ceasing grief. You know, you won't be able to sleep. You won't be be able to be comforted. You won't be able to die. This punishment is forever. And even people in any type of interceding prayers, no one can pray for you. You can't pray for you. 
you can't ask the Father for, for forgiveness. Once you're in hell, there's no coming back. There's no second chances. There's no asking for forgiveness. You're there, and you're there for eternity. That's why we only have this short, very, very short amount of time right now to get it right. You know, I I said this a little bit earlier in the lesson, you know, how a lot of us abuse grace. We try to play with it like like it's a toy. Oh, I've got grace. I'm good. I'm going to do this. I'm covered by grace. You know, I'm going to keep on fornicating. I've got grace. I'm going to... I'm going to keep on using that angel technology to 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 beautify my uh, my eyelashes because I I've, I've got grace. Okay, you you keep on saying, "Well, I've got grace, I've got grace, I've got grace." Grace runs out. And the more we abuse grace, it you're storing up wrath for yourself. And this is what you're storing up for yourself. A higher's wrath leads you to hell. Um Obviously, I, I want to I wanna touch on salvation really quick. Um, the first and most important thing I want to say on salvation is that salvation cannot be earned. There is nothing you can do to earn salvation. And so if we can go to uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 13. All right. Get my Bible back open. I got books all over the place. <laughs> right, all right. Romans all right. 10 and 13. All right. Hitting, hitting that point. All right. Okay. All right, I'm read. Romans 10 and 13. All right. Romans chapter 10. Oh, verse you know 13. All right. I'm I'm at the wrong spot. It's Romans six and twenty three. I apologize, Salakia. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Romans see. six and twenty three. I'm sorry. All right, that was a good one too, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Romans six and twenty three. Romans chapter six, verse twenty three. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the Most High is eternal life through Yeshua. Our Lord. Okay, so salvation is a gift. Salvation is a gift given by the Most High. Um, let's precept this with uh, Ephesians chapter 2. All right. Uh, verse 8 through 10. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 10. Sir. For, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of the Most High, not of works, that any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Mashiach, Yeshia, unto good works which the Most High has uh, before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay, so this is just another verse saying the exact same thing. It is a gift given by Ahia that we get through Christ. Okay, and, and the reason you can't earn salvation, it says right here in verse 9, not of works, least any man should boast. Because you know what, people... <laughs> Regardless how good you are, people are going to boast. Oh, yeah, I, I got my salvation. I earned my salvation. I, I, I donated to that charity. You know, there, there's no way to earn your salvation. Um, it is a free gift given by Ahia through Christ. But there's obviously things we need to do to obtain salvation. So how do we obtain salvation? There, there's nothing you can do to earn it. You cannot earn it. But salvation still has to be obtained. Um, so let's go into Romans 10, verse 13. Now we're going to 10, 13. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself. All right. So there's a few things that you do need to do to be considered safe. But at the same time, I want everyone to understand that you cannot earn salvation. All right. 
Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name, and I'm going to read it as it is the box for a moment. Okay. Who, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right, so we we, we we know right here, Romans chapter 10, verse 13, we have to call upon his name, okay? Um, a, a little bit earlier, I started the lesson off going into the name. Um, so right here it shows for salvation, one of the things we have to do, we have to call upon his name. For whoever shall call upon his name shall be saved. Now let's go to John chapter 3, verse 36. All right. All right. The book of John, Gospel of John, or St. John, chapter 3, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of a higher or the Most High, abideth on him. Okay. So we have to believe in Christ. Okay. So not only do we have to call upon his name, but we also have to believe in him. Because if we don't believe in him, it says right here, if you don't believe in him, then you will never see life. You you will be in that place of torment. Okay. We can't have salvation unless we call upon his name and unless we believe in him. Now let's go to Mark chapter 16. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 15 through 16. Elder, I'm sorry, you said that was Mark, which chapter? Mark 16. All right, so we're at the Gospel of Mark chapter 16. Uh, you said, sorry, 15. Yeah, uh, yeah, start at 15. Okay. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay. So it is also important that we be baptized. Okay. So we need to call upon the name of Christ. We need to believe in Christ and we need to be baptized. Without these three things, we cannot receive the free gift of Ahia. Now, we didn't earn his salvation, but these are three things that Christ said. These were all Christ's words of how we can be saved. And then to get the salvation, we have to call upon the name. We have to believe in him and we have to be baptized, okay? And so we do these three things, and we become, the, the Bible refers to it as a new man. We, we, we become new through Christ. We do these things. We call upon his name. We believe in him. We're baptized. We're now saved. And so we become a new person through Christ. So I want to bring out a few precepts on what it means to be new through Christ. Because nowhere in here did it say, say the sinner's prayer and continue living the way you're living. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now we're going to go ahead and go to Ezekiel chapter 11. We're going to read 19 through 20. Um, now, we all know Ezekiel so here is in the Old Testament. And so this is what was foretold, you know, this is what we would need to do when Christ comes. Mm-hmm. All right. All so right. What, till 11, 19 through 20. All right. And, and, and just for people's understanding, this is a prophetic. So this is not, this is, uh, this is, you're looking at future prophecy. Yes. All right. Future prophecy. So we, so we do go back into the Old Testament to read but we have to for understanding, to get the, to get the complete understanding of the book. All right. Um, Ezekiel chapter 11, verse. I'm going to start at verse 19. 
and I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their power. Okay. So this is prophecy showing that um, I will put a new spirit within you, so I will give you the Holy Spirit, and I'll give you a new heart, but then you're going to need to walk in my statutes. You're going to need to walk in my ordinances, okay? And you will be my people, and I will be your power, okay? Not not me, but, you know, the Most High. Um, and so it, it's, it shows right here that, you know, once we have the spirit, we become new. I will take the stone heart out of your flesh, and I will replace it with the fleshly heart, okay? So we won't have those stone hearts anymore. We change. If you ever knew someone who had a real cold heart, and then, you know, something changed that it warmed their heart up, they're a completely new person. They're not doing the same things they're not, that they used to do. Okay, let's go ahead and go into Second Corinthians chapter 5. All right. That's going to be verse 17. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things become new. You are a new creature through Christ. Let's go ahead and go to uh, uh, Galatians uh, 2.20. Galatians, I'm sorry. Galatians 2 and 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of the Most High, who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, so right there it says, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Okay, so we're a new person. Okay, Christ now lives in us. Should we continue to defile ourselves? Christ is living in us. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. You know, we have the Holy the the the, the Rawak guiding us. Should we continue in our old ways? Let's go ahead to go to uh, Romans chapter six, verse one. And we'll read uh, 1 through 7. Okay. Romans chapter 6, starting at verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? A higher forbid. How shall we, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yeshia, Christ, or uh, the Messiah, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Uh, verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. All right. So he that is dead is freed from sin. Okay, so, so when Christ died, we died with him. You know, and, and, and I love verse 1 and 2. You know, it says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? A higher forbid. No. No, we, we don't want to continue in sin. 
And, um, you know, we, we, we don't want to abuse grace. Um, it, it says all throughout here, you know, it says, so that grace may abound. No. I forbid. Um, we, we, we are new creatures. When we are baptized with Christ, we are baptized into his death. Um, it is important that, that we change because if we continue to abuse grace, and I, I don't I don't mean to um you know beat this into the ground, but um I feel, you know, some of us are we, we, we abuse grace or we think, uh, oh, you know, that one's not really gonna apply to me or you know, God understands uh I need to do this for whatever reason or you know, we, we, we can't continue to fornicate. You know, the the, the the cost of fornication is hell. We can't continue to eat pork. The cost of eating pork is hell. We we can't continue doing these things, these abominable things that that Ahia has put in his word for us not to do. We can't continue deliberately living in sin thinking we're covered by grace. Oh, well, I've got the right name. I know Ahia. I know Yeshia. You know, I, I I observe the Sabbath, but I'm not going to do this. Let's let's go to Hebrews chapter ten really quick. Hebrews ten and twenty six. That's uh, I'm going right. to go there really quick. Okay. Whenever you're ready, up. Almost there. Ten and twenty-six, right? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. It says Hebrews chapter chapter ten, verse twenty-six. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. All right. So that that says it all. Okay. We we know the laws still apply. We 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 know the commandments. Um. But if we continue to sin after we know we're not supposed to, everyone falls down. I know no no one's perfect, and I'm I'm not preaching we need to be perfect. What what I'm trying to say is there's people who aren't even trying to be perfect. You know, it's just like you know, there, there's certain things I might really don't want to beat the fornication into the ground, um, but I know that's probably the biggest thing out there. Uh, when it comes to fornication and pornography, obviously I don't want to make this lesson about that. But um, it, it's important. It says right here, you know, if if we continue in sin after we receive the truth, there's no sacrifice left for our sin. Let's go to uh, the James chapter two. Where is that? Is on James chapter two, where it says if you're if you do one thing, you're guilty of them all. Uh yeah, let's see, James two James two and ten. James two and ten. You probably started. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, uh 10, ten through eleven. Okay. Uh James chapter two verse ten. For who shall who for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou uh, commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. All right. So right there, you know, verse 10, it says, For whosoever shall keep the law, the whole law, yet offend in one point. So if you keep the entire law, you keep nine of the Ten Commandments. But you're breaking one, you're breaking that adultery. Or you're you're breaking you 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 keep all ten commandments, you keep every single law, but every once in a while you just have to have that bacon cheeseburger. You are guilty of all. It it's right here, James, two and ten. You're guilty of all. For the same person that said don't commit adultery also said don't kill. The most high said mm-hmm. that. And so but if you don't commit adultery but you go around killing folks, you're guilty of breaking the law. Right. Um, I want to go ahead, wrap it up uh, with uh, Matthew chapter 7. It's going to be our last precept here. Oh, 
All right, all right. You get there. And we're going to do verses 13 through 14. Oh, good. All right. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13, starting in verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Perfect. And and few. Few there be that find it. And so that's uh, how I'm going to end my lesson. Um, we need to just really, Matthew 7, you know, 13 through 14 is a perfect way um, to go ahead and wrap up this lesson. Um, because you, you, you've you got the breakdown of Ahia's wrath. Uh, you've got the breakdown of hell and everything that pertains in hell, and hopefully it scared the crap out of you, um, because it's some scary stuff for me to read. Um, but also hearing the stuff about Abraham's bosom is is really reassuring to me, and it's it gives you something to strive for. It, it, it makes you want to strive for that perfection even more. One, because I'm too scared to go to hell, and two, I really, really want that Abraham's bosom. I, I, I'll tell you what, I can use some quiet rest, <laughs> you know. Um, and so we, we need to remember that, you know, broad is the way to hell, and but narrow is the path to heaven. Narrow is the way to Abraham's bosom, you know, and it's traveled by few. Only a few people go to the right where the masses are being drugged to the left. And that's my lesson. Amen.